fact, bear with us. We are doing the best we can with new technology. It's a new virtual world that we've never been in before. If you're having any issues, please let us know in the chat room and one of us will be glad to help you. Now, many of you may be used to Zoom, but here's how we'll be operating today. Everyone is on mute, as you've already probably figured that out. If you're on a laptop or a desktop, you can select speaker view or gallery view. If you're on a phone, you can swipe to switch between gallery and speaker view. Usually on a phone, you can only see no more than four people at a time, just so you're aware of that. There'll be some videos today also, so please make sure that you are able to see the full screen when that happens. The chat function will be open during our celebration today. It will also be used later as we are in the program for the live Q&A session. During that Q&A session, you can also ask a question by using the raise hand button in the participant screen and then receive an unmute request from one of us to accept that so you can ask your question. Thank you again for joining us. If you want to take a screenshot today and post the fun that you're having, please feel free to do so using uh, any hashtag you want about United Way. I'm sure there's some that are going to pop up in the chat room for that. We'll be doing that ourselves with our uh, media posts here. We'll also start a program with a word from United Way of Pierce County's president and CEO, Donna Ponapento. Donna, let's play ball. Uh, thank you, Chris. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending United Way of Pierce County's annual Premier Partners and Campaign Awards event tonight. What a beautiful afternoon, isn't it? Uh, we're thrilled that you're all here. But before we begin the program, we want to honor and acknowledge that our gathering is being held on the traditional lands of the Puyallup people as we pay our respects to elders both past and present. First, join me in thanking our virtual host, the Tacoma Rainiers. Due, the, due to the pandemic, we are not able to enjoy a fun night of live baseball at the park as we originally planned, but we look forward to doing it next year. Uh, we'd also like to thank our sponsor, the Boeing Company. We appreciate your continued support. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge our board of directors. Uh, tonight, we have with us in the stands Sue Dreyer, M Mabel Edmonds, Stuart Grover, Linda Proitt, Carla Santorno, Nicole Sherman, Eli Taylor, and Tina Vassen. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to our work. So, you know, we're almost 100 years old. Uh, and so for almost 100 years, United Way of Pierce County has been mobilizing the caring power of our community to tackle those issues that all of us care about. You know, we've had a bold goal for the last several years to lift 15,000 households out of poverty by 2028. And you know, we can't do that without all of the support that all of you provide to us every year. And that's what tonight's event is about. Tonight's event is all about you. It's celebrating you, celebrating what I like to call all of you is the hope makers, the hope makers in our community, the individuals, the families, and the companies that are joining us to end poverty uh, every single day in our community. So change happens when we come together. This is what gives me hope for the future. This hope is heard every single day when a client is connected to a job, housing, or basic needs in 2 on one or when a client is able to lower their debt and increase their in income through our Centers for Strong Families. You know these families. These are our Alice families, those asset-limited, income-constrained, employed families that are working hard every day and during this pandemic are even more challenged. Uh, each of you are responsible for giving hope through donations, through volunteering, through in-kind uh, gifts, uh, the in-kind support that you give us and more. And for this, we are just truly, uh, we're truly grateful. Uh, and again, you know, so all of this can't happen without you. So we couldn't do it without the support of the more than 350 companies in Pierce County and hundreds of community leaders, our Tocqueville Society members and leadership donors and other individuals who last year alone contributed more than $6.4 million to United Way, which went back into our community. 33 companies from across Pierce County have been selected as our 2019 premier partners for the, their commitment to our work through quality workplace campaigns, community volunteerism, in-kind support, and sponsorships. These businesses are investing in our community and leading the fight to end poverty. Thank you for your dedication and generosity. This couldn't happen without you. 
At this time, I'd like for you to join me in hearing from Aaron Artman, the president of Tacoma Rainiers. He was unable to join us today, but has offered to say a few words. Well, hello, my name is Aaron Artman. I'm the president of the We Are Tacoma family of teams, mainly the Tacoma Rainiers and Tacoma Defiance. Sorry, uh, you're not out here celebrating uh, with us like we had planned, but like a lot of aspects of our life, things have changed with COVID-19. Here at Cheney Stadium, we are pretty quiet. We have the Mariners taxi squad, which will be the extra roster players and then the top 20 prospects in our stadium working out and doing intra-squad inter scrimmages for the next 70 days. And we have a few defiance matches, but of course no fans are allowed. So we are uh, scrapping and trying to stay relevant and still serving food. We have Genieville grab and go. So we have a little bit of action here, but really like a lot of you and, and a lot of the partners uh, within the United Way of Pierce County's ecosystem, it's, it's tough for all of us. But I think if there's a silver lining here and I think it applies to the, the great work you all do and that we try to do in the community, uh, our things we took for granted lists are very long. And I think that's a good thing. I think we're realizing what we missed uh, what we miss, an opportunity to help other people, things we miss that we get to experience ourselves. And I think that's what our organizations are about. They really are about doing great things here in this region and using the assets, the partners, quite frankly, this stadium to do these things. And so uh, we really appreciate your support. We look forward to hosting you next year uh, for the 100 year celebration. And uh, we're here for you if you ever need us, just like we know you are for us and for the city overall in the region. Thank you to Aaron and the Rainiers for that video. Throughout the program, we'll be featuring behind the scenes footage of the amazing Cheney Stadium hosted by Casey Catherwood, as well as giving out some prizes. But the bulk of our event is the awards portion. Here's United Way's Chief Development Officer, Emily Mendez Bryant, who will be announcing the campaign awards. Thank you, Chris. So happy to be here with all of you this beautiful, beautiful afternoon. And I'm sure you guys are ready to play ball. So let's get to it. The following companies have received campaign award nominations as a result of their extraordinary support, dedication, and investment in programs and services that help people who are struggling in our community. These businesses are true champions in the fight to end poverty, one family at a time. So let's start the first inning, I mean first campaign award. The following campaigns have campaign coordinators that have been nominated for campaign coordinator of the year. There are six nominees. The first one is first, is Baxter Hobart Bakery Systems, Steve Rodriguez. Bethel School District, Jay Brower. CHI Franciscan, co-coordinators Kathy Schmidt and Doug Baxter Jenkins. Fred Meyer Distribution, co-coordinators Jerry Lively and Lisa Horn. Pierce Transit, co-coordinators Alexandra Mather and Monette Smith. Last but not least, Titus Will for Toyota, Jody Fetters. Well, this year we have two winners in this category. For our first winner, we can't say enough about this coordinator. He has been with this company for 18 years and has been a donor to United Way for 40. He coordinates a dedicated all staff meeting where he speaks on the value and mission of United Way of Pierce County. This year, he led the campaign to increase over last year with 85% of their employees participating. Congratulations to Steve Rodriguez and Baxter Hobart Bakery Systems. Yes, thank you. As for our second winner, this first time coordinator was instrumental in getting all company locations to take part of this campaign. Rally and kickoff with over 95% participation, she helped move smaller donations by speaking from the heart, resulting in donors increasing their gift amounts and a growth over last year of 292%. That's amazing. Congratulations to Jody Fetters and Titus Will for Toyota. <laughs> Woohoo, man, no strikes here, guys. So are you ready for the second inning? Because I am, let's go for it. The following four companies have campaign coordinator teams that have been nominated for campaign coordinator team of the year. First up is Davida, led by Ali McGee. Parametrics, led by Hope Rockwell and Whitney Prince. Tacoma Pierce County Health Department, led by Nigel Turner. And Tacoma Public Utilities, led by Latasha Wortham. Now this winning organization is a powerhouse when it comes to supporting United Way. 
The support for the campaign can be felt strongly in the, in the walls of their buildings throughout the campaign. Not only that, this team runs a near perfect best practice campaign with special events, presentations, and raffles. Their skills were especially put to the test when their longtime coordinator left the company a few months before their actual campaign. They rallied around their temporary coordinator, helping to raise an increased amount over last year. So congratulations to Latasha Wortham and the rest of the team at Tacoma Public Utilities. <laughs> Way to make a home run for our community. Thanks guys. Congratulations and thank you to our winners so far for your hard efforts. As promised, we are now going to show you a bit of the behind the scenes action from Cheney Stadium. Take it away, Rhubarb. Welcome to historic Cheney Stadium here on 19th and Tyler in Tacoma, Washington, home of Tacoma baseball for the last 60 years. We are so excited to welcome our United Way friends and family here to the park today. Hey, we wish we were playing baseball, but this tour's gonna just have to do. Now, this beautiful stadium facade you've seen was renovated from the original stadium built in 100 days in 1960 in the year 2010, putting a breath of life in this park that will make it a spot for generations of family and friends from the South Sound and the greater Pacific Northwest to enjoy for, I hope, forever. Let's, uh, let's get in the gates that here. What do you say, Rue? Awesome, Casey and Rhubarb. We'll come back to you in a bit. Now, Donna. Did I hear we're going to have some drawings throughout this event today for some cool Rainiers, Rain, Defiance, and United Way swag? For everyone who's RSVP, you've already been entered to win a chance to have for a chance to win a prize. And we're just as excited as you are. Yes, you heard correctly, Chris. We are going to do our first drawing now. I've got the bowl full of uh, names to pull. And the first winner is. Edward Flash from DeVita. Ooh, congratulations, Edward <laughs> Flash. You won a Rainier memorabilia. You won a Rainier memorabilia package. United Way will send you your prize. Please keep your eyes on your inbox for further directions. Emily, do we have another award to announce? Yes, Chris, we do. Let's see who's next at bat. The next award is Rising Star. This award is for campaigns that have shown considerable growth and have risen to the occasion. We have two nominees who are also the awardees this year. The first winner is a business that joined United Way from when they first opened their doors. They started a beneficiary tap of one of their ciders during their grand opening with a portion of the proceeds going back to our work. Additionally, they hosted numerous events benefiting United Way and are engaging in our small business initiative. Congratulations to Incline Cider. The second winner had a campaign that really showed up this year by increasing the number of employees donating, which was paired by a corporate match. Additionally, they joined in helping the community during the pandemic with a $25,000 gift to the Pierce County Connected COVID-19 Relief Fund, a partnership with, between Greater Tacoma Community Foundation and the United Way of Pierce County. Congratulations to Pacific Source Health Plans. And congratulations to you both for putting those plays into action. All right, we're, we're moving forward. Man, these innings are going fast. Okay, the next award is for inaugural campaign. Kind of like Rookie of the Year in baseball, right? Um, the nominee and winner in this category is recognized for running their very first workplace campaign. We were so excited that this specific location wanted to join us with their very first ever campaign this year. To kick things off, they took part of Day of Action, a volunteer opportunity, and had over 100 employees giving during their campaign, all of which was paired by a 100% corporate match. Well, congratulations, here we go. Titus Will, Lakewood Ford. Hey, thanks for that applause, guys. Yeah, keep it coming. Thank you to all of these companies, teams, and coordinators for dedicating their efforts to our work. Now this baseball game, I'm telling you, oh, I mean, award of it, it's so much fun. Um, Chris, are you, are you ready for another stadium tour? I am, Emily, and I'm quite excited for it. Let's check out the hottest spots to hang out during the games. Welcome to the Multicare 1882 Club, Cheney Stadium's most premier, top of the top, 
hospitality area. We debuted it last year, right, Rue? And it was sold out immediately. And that's because this is a spread out, beautiful area where you can uh, enjoy your big party, enjoy our full bar service. And it really feels like a fun Friday night atmosphere pretty much every night, every game, because People are laughing, sharing moments at the ballpark, and it's, it's the best. We can't wait to host our friends and family from United Way as soon as possible when baseball resumes. So let's go sit on a couch and check it out, Rue. As you can see, Rue and I are just lamping here in the Multicare 1882 Club. Beautiful couches, super comfortable, a great place to spread out, chill, uh, enjoy your time with friends, but then I mean, rhubarb, come on, look at these views. This is home plate action right here. You can see the entire field perfectly elevated. And it's awesome for soccer, too. This is, uh, in my opinion, the absolute best place to watch a game at Cheney Stadium. And again, we are so excited to host all of our friends and family from United Way as soon as possible. It sounds like you guys are taking up the whole club, which that's going to be one heck of a party and a total celebration of life here in the South Sound. We're excited. Now here we are at Tacoma's hottest night spot, our bar right here on the third base side at Cheney Stadium. This area is home to usually packed full of healthy and happy Rainiers fans enjoying a fully stocked bar, all the adult beverages under the sun. And we look so forward to welcoming them all back for Thirsty Thursdays, our $2 beer nights, or any night where camaraderie can be enjoyed around the fireplace, the fires of Cheney, watching nine innings of Rainier's baseball. Uh, what you, could be better than that? We love to be there having those thirsty brewers right now. Now that we know where to go, Donna, our viewers are on the edges of their seats dying to know who will win the next drawing. Can we pull that next name? Yes, we sure can, Chris. And the next winner is Vera Brokenshire uh, with New Star Energy. Congratulations, awesome. Vera. Congratulations, Vera. You won the ultimate defiance package. As I mentioned earlier, United Way will be in touch to send you your prize. Now, Emily, let's head over to you for our next set of awards. All right, guys, are you ready for another inning? Let's go, let's go. Our first award is for Small Company Campaign of the Year. Our five nominees are Cold Graphic Solutions, Jean Pinky Motor Company Incorporated, J Ray Advertising, New Star Energy, TPSC Benefits. The corporate headquarters and local office for this business are huge supporters of United Way, so much so that the district office from California joined us for their kickoff event. This year, they increased their giving last year, over last year, with 88% of their employees participating. Additionally, they engage year-round with United Way through their support for the summer reading program, as well as Day of Action. Congratulations to New Star Energy. I love hearing that clapping, it's awesome. All right, the second award is for Medium Company Campaign of the Year. Our six nominees are, here we go guys, Coordinated Care, FedEx, Heritage Bank, Key Bank, Corum Automotive Group, and Titus Will for Toyota. Now this team takes part in day of caring activities at the Puyallup Food Bank supporting our hunger initiative Additionally, they are known for their strong campaigns that increase donations year over year. They always have fun with their campaigns, including lively chili potlucks. Oh, I wish I was there. And not so silent auctions. Wow, they sound like they're having fun. Congratulations to Corum Automotive Group. Awesome. Thank you to all the small and medium companies for your phenomenal campaigns. Your support is greatly appreciated. Do you see all of these home runs happening? I mean, I am just floored. Wow, it's amazing. Chris, let's check out the next area of Cheney Stadium. All right, Emily, we have Rhubarb and Casey on the field. They're maybe gonna run some home runs for us too. And this grass here, Rue, is the home of Tacoma Rainiers baseball and Tacoma Tacoma Defiant Soccer, you take a look around and you just, you can almost feel the stories, the memories for so many families and friends and players over the years, 60 years of memories, South Sound memories here, and it's waiting to be back, right? We miss it so, so much, but we know that when it does return, 
it will be an amazing moment and a memory that will maybe be as good as any of the ones that came before it. So until then, we will wait, but we're ready, and I know you're ready, and we're so glad to, we're so glad to even have this moment to get to stand out here, right? It just feels right. So let's show them the dugout. And here we are in the actual Rainier's dugout where the team from Tacoma sits when they're playing their games. Greats like Felix Hernandez, Ichiro, and Robinson Cano have all shared this air where Rhubarb and I are sitting. You know, right now it's empty. It's waiting for our players to return, but they will someday soon. In fact, quite soon because our taxi squad of players that don't make the Mariners roster will be here at the end of this month and they'll be ready to play, put on a show up in Seattle and around the, around the country at the major exciting. league level. We can't wait for things to be happening there at Cheney Stadium again. And there you have it, Donna. I think it's time to pull the name of the next drawing winner. Okay, of course, Chris. And the next winner is Alan Belton with Pacific Lutheran University. Congratulations, Alan, from Pacific Lutheran University. You won the Rainier's t-shirt package. Again, United Way will be in touch to send you your prize. And Emily, I think we've got two more awards that we need to announce. I know, this game is going fast. Here we go, guys. Yes, we do. I mean, our second to last award is for Large Company Campaign of the Year. Our six nominees are CHI Franciscan Health, Columbia Bank, Costco, DaVita, Target, and United Parcel Service. Now the winner of this award is known for their special events and promoting payroll deduction participation, as well as their great partnership in providing us with a loan executive every year, every single year. COVID-19 hit as they were partially through their campaign, and yet they were still able to raise close to what they did the previous year. Congratulations to Davida! Woohoo! Yes! Awesome! Now we are at our last inning. I mean, award. Okay, guys, I, I'm I'm there. I'm at the Cheney, I'm at the Cheney Stadium right now. Um, for this evening, it is for the public sector campaign of the year. Our six nominees are Bethel School District, City of Tacoma, Pierce Transit. Yallop School District, Tacoma Public Schools, and Tacoma Public Utilities. This organization holds a multifaceted campaign with an early morning kickoff event, including breakfast snacks, a parking lot auction, and a match for new donations from employees. Wow, that's pretty incredible. This year, they spice things up, accepting a challenge from the health department to increase participation and donations. Congratulations to... Pierce Transit! Special shout out to Pierce Transit CEO, Sue Dreyer, who's on the call, who is also on our board and at the event today. A huge thank you to all the nominees and award winners. You really hit it out the ballpark. Participation at each workplace campaign through leadership at the company, corporate and donor gifts, volunteering, in-kind gifts, sponsorships, and so much more. This is all so important and it reflects the value and investment on giving back. You are leading the fight against poverty and helping to build a thriving community for all of us. And for that, we are truly great, grateful. It really takes a team, a team to lift a community. And so we thank you for joining our home team here in Pierce County and here's to Living United. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Emily. And how about a big round of applause for all those winners today and all the nominees. Again, that's an amazing slate of people who have done so much for our community. Now, don't think you're going to leave us yet. We've still got a lot to go on. And so we have a final tour of Cheney Stadium and another drawing after that. Then we will have our live Q&A with Donna and a lead staff member from the Tacoma Rainiers that you will not want to miss. Casey and Rue, take it away. All right, now we are here at the Mary Bridge Children's Family Pavilion, home of playgrounds, wiffle ball fields, and tons of family fun. You bring your kids to the Rainiers game, but they just tend to gravitate over to the playground, and can you blame them? It's tons of fun, usually full of uh, kids climbing and sliding and just having a great time. 
It's just the best. Batters up. We are here at the Mary Bridge Children's Family Pavilion, full-size wiffle ball field, home of home run derbies, uh, peg ball, you name it. This place is usually packed full of children any night, given night at the park. It's uh, anything short of calling it a home run would be selling it short. We love having this here. This was added a couple years ago, and it has been one of the most popular attractions we have at Cheney Stadium. Donna, Fun for the whole like family. Check it out. And we're on our way to the home plate, which would mean it's our fourth drawing. How does that work out? We got four drawings, four plates that we had to get to. The winner of the drawing will receive a special prize of an autographed Rainier's baseball bat. Donna, who is our lucky winner going to be? Okay, our lucky winner is Brandon Carr. APA, the Engineered Wood Association. Congratulations, Brandon. Fantastic, Brandon, congratulations. As a reminder to all the drawing winners today, United Way will reach out to you to coordinate receiving your awesome prizes. And for all of you that didn't win, guess what? We're going into extra innings. You've got one more shot. That's right. After our event today, you're going to receive an email asking you to fill out a post-event survey. Complete that survey and you'll be entered into a drawing where one lucky participant will win another awesome prize just like the ones that you saw here today. Now, earlier I mentioned that we would have a live Q&A, but before we do, we have an appearance from a surprise special guest. Donna, I'll let you do the introductions. Well, I am really, really excited uh, to introduce um, our special guest, uh, Suzanne McCormick. Uh, was named the U.S. President of United Way Worldwide in June of 2019. Uh, she is responsible for helping over about 1,100 local United Ways across the U.S. trailblaze in the philanthropic space to build, more, um, build a more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable community. Uh, I have known Suzanne for a while. She came to United Way Worldwide from Tampa, Florida, where she was uh, spent five years as the CEO of the uh, United Way of Sun Coast, one of Florida's largest United Ways. Before that, she was also president of the United Way in Portland, Maine. I could say a whole lot about Suzanne. She's just a, she's a phenomenal leader and a great friend. And so would everyone join me in welcoming Suzanne McCormick, U.S. President, United Way Worldwide. Thanks, Donna. I'm so glad to be here. I went and put on my baseball cap. Um, I didn't have my Live United shirt. Um, and I'm, I'm actually joining you all. Um, I'm almost like, like due east across the United States. I'm in Maine right now. Um, I'm about 3,112 miles from you. And while it's a beautiful afternoon in Tacoma, Washington, it's a beautiful evening here in Maine. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be with you. This is my first opportunity to be a part of um, a community virtual gathering to celebrate your campaign success. And I just wanna say kudos to the team there. Donna, you are an amazing leader and I'm so impressed with the energy, the production, um, the videos. I feel like I'm really there and I'm really grateful that I actually get to be with you for this. Uh, I wanna say huge thanks and congratulations to all of the, not only the winners, but all of the nominees for all the different categories of the awards. Um, just seeing the, the, the diversity and the different categories, it just shows the strength of your community. Um, over the last several months, I think for all of us, like we've been in unprecedented times and as challenging as they have been, uh, they have shown to me, uh, I've never seen the strength of the, of the United Way more on display than I've seen as we've all been working through the, the COVID pandemic. Um, and Tacoma is included in that. I think uh, this really challenging event across the country has shown how important United Way is, our relevancy in a way that's never been demonstrated before. And it's because of all the people who are on this call. Um, if you ever ask me what's the best part of my job, either when I was leading a local, un uh, leading a local United Way or now, it's the people that I get to work with and we get to work with. And it's not just our staffs, it is our volunteers and it's our corporate partners and it's our community partners. And I think that is the special sauce of United Way that makes us different than any other nonprofit organization out there. 
So I just want to say thank you. I salute um, all the winners, but also the nominees. Um, you're just showing the power of caring. You're showing the power that we need to continue to elevate as we move from this response with COVID into recovery. We can't do it without you. So I'm just so glad to be here. Donna, thank you for the invitation. And, um, and really like the silver lining in COVID is, is like this virtual world has created easier opportunities to be able to connect. So thanks for having me. I salute you all. And um, I really do look forward to like a personal visit, coming to a, a game in person and, um, and being there on the West Coast. But for now, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited and, and privileged to be part of it virtually. So thank you, Donna, and to your entire team and to your entire community. Thank, thank you. you. Go ahead, Donna. No, I was just gonna say thank you, Suzanne. We really appreciate you being a part of our event. And thank you again, Suzanne. From all of us here in the Northwest to you where you are in the Northeast, this has been such a special surprise treat for us all here in Pierce County today to join us in Genie Stadium for our virtual yeah, ball game. Yeah. <laughs> now, as promised, we said we were going to have a Q&A session. So now we are going to open up for the Q&A with our wonderful Donna Ponapinto, and then also the Rainier's Vice President of Sales, Shane Santman. So to get the conversation rolling, um, I'll start off with a few questions. And after that, we'd like to hear from all of you. If you have questions for Donna or Shane, please use the raise hand function on your Zoom screen. It's if you look for participants, you click on that, it'll say raise hand. If you aren't able to find that, you can certainly type that question into the chat box and we will bring that over into the spoken portion of our meeting. Now, our first question today is for Donna. Donna, how has United Way responded in the community during the pandemic? What are the greatest needs in our community at this time? It's, uh, well, you know, we jumped right in. Uh, once, you know, it was late, uh, middle of March, uh, we partnered, first of all, with the Greater Tacoma Community Foundation uh, to raise funds to be able to get those dollars out into the community. So along with the community foundation, the Tacoma Community Foundation, and uh, gosh, numerous uh, philanthropic partners and, and family foundations in the community, we've raised over $7.3 million and we've gotten out into the to nonprofit organizations about 3.8 of that so far. Probably it's closer to about 3.9, but really trying to meet those most critical needs, uh, which were around uh, childcare, uh, housing and shelter, and food. Uh, and you know, surprisingly, those continue to still be some of the greatest needs. Our 211 went into full gear. Um, our 211 is the uh, uh, information call center. Uh, what we we worked with the other 211s across the state uh, to take in the 800 number calls that were coming in for COVID. So we took a lot of those. Uh, we were still taking those calls. My 211 call center staff you know, are on call from 6 a.m. in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, uh, taking those calls along with taking other basic needs calls that they get every day. Uh, we also were point for the county with regards to volunteering. Uh, so uh, my team, again, you know, stepped up and made sure that there were plenty of uh, ways in which individuals could volunteer in a safe way. And a lot of those have been virtual volunteer opportunities. Uh, we continue uh, to stay engaged and really thinking about, you know, what else do nonprofits need? So working with the county to do a survey to say, you know, what are your most greatest needs right now during this time? Um, how are you handling everything? Uh, and I will say, our nonprofit community is resilient. Uh, they're doing great work out there every day. Thank you, Donna. That was a wonderful answer to those questions. Now, I think we'll go over to Shane. And so, Shane, what does the future hold for the Rainiers? Um, I know there's also some plans for a new soccer stadium. Can you talk a little bit about all of those things? Sure. Thank, thank you, Chris. And, and again, I, I think I'll echo uh, what Aaron Artman said, uh, and that we sure wish we were, we were uh, hosting you at the ballpark to do this presentation and this meeting. Uh, looking outside with the, uh, the weather recently would, would have been unbelievable, uh, baseball and soccer weather. So uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. Um, but, I, you know, as we look, Chris, towards, you know, what, what we have on, on tap for the Rainiers, um, we, we have been on, a, a, on an unbelievable pace. Um, 
you know, as we look towards the success of our team. And when I, when I talk success of our team, and it may sound funny, but I really don't refer to what happens on the field. Um, you know, again, as funny as that may sound, what happens on the field is it, it's, it's really out of our control. Um, all of our players are assigned to us from, our, from the Mariners, which, again, it, again, it may sound a little contrary, but the Mariners are a competitor of mine. Um, they're competing for every single entertainment dollar in the community. Um, I'm looking to keep every, uh, every partnership and every dollar home at Cheney Stadium as opposed to going up to Safeco. Um, and again, the Mariners control my product on the field. So uh, a little counterintuitive, but we, you know, again, we don't base our success, again, on what happens on the field. If we have a great team and our players play well, phenomenal. Well, you know, we'll ride that wave and have it help us out. Um, but we don't want to put ourselves in a bad spot if, you know, uh, if, again, we, we, we were dealt a bad hand as far as who our talent uh, on the field may be. Um, now, I will say this year, we were, we were certainly shaping up with, uh, um, you know, the, the Mariners' recent lack of success uh, in stockpiling of prospects. We were shaping up to probably have our best team uh, in, in recent memory, so we're disappointed to not have that. But obviously, we're excited to at least have baseball back. Um, so, you know, again, the success, we, we, we've just been on an unbelievable growth trajectory since we've got the new ballpark. We've now entered the, the soccer business as well, um, which I think everybody is probably aware of, um, which is an unbelievable process um, in, in, and um, uh, project, if you will, as far as what we do on that front. We're roughly, uh, let's, let's just say 15 times a year. For all intents and purposes, we, we tear up the Cheney Stadium baseball field. Uh, we put it in a soccer field. We'll play one soccer game or maybe two soccer games, and then immediately following a soccer game, we'll tear out the soccer field, we'll put back in a baseball field, uh, and then we'll be ready for another four or eight or 12-game Rainiers homestand. And then we just cycle through. We, can, we continue doing that um, uh, over the course of the entire spring and summer and early fall. Um, all to the tune of about to about a fifty fifty thousand dollar investment every single time that we have to f our field, um, which then leads us to the uh, the new project that we had great momentum on uh, prior to to the pandemic hitting, uh, what which was the the development and creation of you know a brand new sports entertainment uh, facility that would house our soccer team uh, along with an entertainment uh, district, if you will, uh, around the soccer stadium that that would have housed bars and restaurants some housing opportunities, et cetera. Um, you know, obviously with, with the state of our world right now, all that is, is obviously on hold, uh, but undoubtedly look, we look and hope uh, to be able to pick that back up uh, once our, our, our world uh, returns to normal. Thank you so much, Shane. And I'll tell you, I'd rather be at a game at Cheney than Safeco Field any day. So thank you for doing everything you do to make Cheney Stadium so welcoming to all of us. It's a great beacon in our community and a resource. And it's so much fun to have soccer there now too, which is awesome. Um, Donna, how about another question for you? What part will United Way play in the community's long-term recovery efforts from the pandemic? Yeah, Chris, that's a great, uh, that is a great question. When I think about recovery, I kind of think about it in terms of how do we reimagine, you know, the way we do our work, you know, the way that nonprofits um, uh, deliver their services, the way that United Way um, does, you know, the way that we do the things that we do, you know, we are about being in community and with community. And so having to do that virtually um, uh, is something that we're thinking about now. So when we think about uh, long-term recovery efforts is how do we um, support the infrastructure within the nonprofit community? How do we build our, uh, strengthen our partnerships with our corporate partners? Uh, that, you know, who are with us today and so support uh, the efforts um, and the ability for us to do what we do, um, but also to look at the philanthropic community. Uh, there's a great deal of generosity uh, in Pierce County. We've seen it, you know, as a result of this pandemic. And so how can we take that energy and that momentum um, of all that generosity and continue to bring people together to think about and strategize, you know, what is this new world going to look like? Um, because I, I think it, uh, recovery is going to be long. <laughs> uh, and uh, right now, we're still in kind of, I feel, this urgent stage. You know, we're still in this stage where, you know, people are, are needing support. They're needing services. 
you know, um, individuals who are who are not able to work are needing support. You know, I talked about at the beginning the Alice families, those families that are asset limited, income constrained, and employed. You know, they are always on the brink. You know, they're one emergency away um, from falling uh, into a major crisis. And so, how do we make sure that collectively we're providing supports? Uh, for those individuals in our community that need it the most, including those uh, essential workers, the frontline workers. So I think it's just, it's gonna be this ongoing thing that we have to stay on top of it, working with our partners out in the community, both the nonprofit um, and as well as city county government, which has been, it's been fantastic for us. You know, the city of Tacoma, other cities in, in Pierce County, uh, Pierce County government has always been really supportive of United Way. So it's been great to be around the table to think with them in terms of what are the greatest needs and how can we begin uh, to be on this road to recovery. So uh, it's going to be a, a journey, but I feel confident that uh, collectively uh, we'll be able to support um, community needs. Thank you, Donna. And that's something, you know, it's so nice to have an organization like United Way Pierce County that is leading us in this community and helping other organizations with their resources and just being that beacon that's saying we're going to get through this and we'll get through it together and we're here for the long haul to make sure we come through it. So thank you to United Way for all of that, and what you do with your team there. Um, I promised we'd have some time for a Q&A from the audience today. So if any of you have any questions for Donna or Shane, you can use that raise hand in the participant screen. If you don't want to raise hand and talk to yourself, you can always type that question into the chat box and we're glad to relay your questions over from there. So do we have any brave individuals who'd like to raise their hand for a question and answer? And you can ask them anything. What's your favorite drink on the seventh inning stretch? Anything like that. You can ask them anything. Just don't ask me to sing. Uh, see, now that sounds like a challenge, Donna. And I, until we get a question, I may just make you sing, take me out to the ball game until we get a question. <laughs> It's I don't know the as well, Chris. You can count me out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we. I think I don't see any questions. We'll give another second to see if anybody has one in the chat box. Um, while we're waiting for that, Shane, can you tell me a little bit more about Cheney Stadium? I know it went through that major remodel in 2010, if I'm not uh, mistaken on that. And I know that every time I come there it seems like something new has changed and it's better than it was the last time I was there. So how are you making it so phenomenal every time we go back to Cheney Stadium? Well, it, 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 that's a fair question. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you it's because of our, our ownership group. We have, we have an unbelievable uh, local ownership group, which, which is not always the case when you look at sports teams that, you know, are owned by, by folks that are out of town and whatnot. We have a group of local investors um, anchored, um, by a gentleman by the name of Michael Thompson, who, who uh, is originally from University Place uh, and now has a, a, a very successful business up in, in Bellevue. Uh, and he has a group of, uh, again, investors on, on his team um, who all are from the region. They're from the area. Um, they want to see Cheney Stadium be the most successful stadium um, in the region, in the land. Um, and they continue, uh, continually invest every single year uh, and something new at the ballpark, whether it be the addition, as we saw earlier, uh, of the new 1882 club that we that we unveiled last year, which which as soon as we unveiled that, it sold out in a heartbeat. Um, to the playground that we've done before, to the development of the R bar, um, to uh, new uh, LED lights that we were just getting ready to unveil throughout our entire stadium. Um, always, we're always looking to improve. Again, because we know we're competing with the Mariners, you know, 30 miles up the road, we've got to figure out a way to keep our product fresh and relevant. Uh, and, and be on the cutting edge um, to, to not allow the market an opportunity or a reason to, to venture away from us. And you're doing it. Thank you so much, Shane. Donna, we have a question for you from Joe, and that is, what is your favorite drink during a ball game at Jimmy? Well, let's see. My favorite drink, I'm a wine drinker, but I have been known to have a beer at a ball game. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I will. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe has a follow-up question, too. And this one's for you, um, for both of you, actually, for Shane and Donna. Do you have a favorite position you like to watch? <laughs> Donna, you want to take that one first, or do you want me to Okay, run? let's see. What's the fit? You know what? Hmm. 
I never really thought about it, but I'm probably second base because I always like, you know, there's always someone on first trying to get to second, you know, steal second. That's also, I'll say second base. <laughs> If if I'm going to put myself in in the in the shoes of a fan, uh, Chris, I'm going to say, and I don't know. I, I imagine uh, some of you on the call may have been down here before, um, but we have a, a spot in the ballpark called the Dugout Club, and it's it's mm. it's second to none. Um, it's a it is a private club, and it's been sold out every year since the ballpark opened, where I have 176 uh, seats and 176 fans that sit. Uh, literally right in the front of the ballpark. Um, and they sit closer. Uh, one of the unique things about, about these dugout club seats, it's the old, we're the only team in the entire land that can profess this. Is that if you sit down in the dugout club, you actually sit closer to the catcher than the pitcher is. If you're closer to the catcher than the pitcher. Uh, and the view is just absolutely unbelievable. And the other really, really unique thing about those seats, above and beyond getting you know booze and free food all night long, um, is that the only way to access your seats is through a private tunnel way that you share with our players. And so during the game, our fans that sit in the dugout club are literally walking shoulder to shoulder with our players um, before the games, you know, they're getting autographs and maybe a picture doing that type of thing. Um, and so again, we focus on experience at the ballpark and, and that's just one of the ways we do it. If you ever, if you ever have the opportunity to go down there, take advantage of it, you'll love it. And the view is, is literally second down there. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. We have another question for you from Pam Duncan, the Zoom magician, which I love your name on that, Pam. And that is, what's your favorite part about the baseball season? Uh, you know, the, a couple of things. Number one, it, the, the baseball season's long. You know, it's about a six-month season. Thankfully, I've got a very uh, understanding wife who takes care of our three kids at home when I'm, you know, when I'm not home for 12 days in a row. Um, you know, so that's, that's the, you know, the downfall of the job from my perspective, but uh, the upside of the job is, is absolutely unbelievable. You know, I, I know a number uh, of, of the uh, guests on the call today. Uh, I know you personally from, from having a beer with you at the ballpark, shaking your hand, saying hi, helping take Mike Goodell. I see you, Mike. Yeah. Uh, it, it, taking your family or your kids on the field to uh, get a picture on the field before the game. I mean, literally, that's the type of thing that we love doing. You know, I've got a staff, um, we've got a staff of roughly, uh, you know, 40 people at the ballpark uh, who focus their day, every day, on, on how can we make somebody's experience at the ballpark and how can we create an experience for them that they can't get elsewhere. And again, some of the ways we do that um, are, are, are looking for opportunities. We see a, you know, a cute kid in the ballpark, hey, let's go take him on the field or her on the field before the, you know, for the, before the game to get a picture, sit in the dugout, uh, do that type of thing. Um, just looking for really fun opportunities to make somebody's day uh, is probably what, what I think myself and my entire team enjoy the most about what we do. Wonderful. Thank you, Shane. Donna, we have a question from the bleachers for you. And that is, are there volunteer opportunities right now for people? And are there virtual options if they were able to do that? Yes, there's certainly, there are virtual options. We have our summer uh, meal program right now, which offers some virtual opportunities as we're putting together snack packs uh, for um, uh, the kids during summer programs. And you can check that all out on our website, uh, www.uwpc.org, uh, and just click on volunteer and uh, all those activities will pop up. Wonderful. We'll take one last look in the magic chat window. Let's see, we've got, oh, we got another question from the bleachers. Shane, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the taxi squad? Uh, yes and no. Um, let, me, let me backtrack real quick. Uh, again, as I, as I talk about the Mariners and our relationship with them, we have an unbelievably great relationship with them. The transactions happen so often um, uh, literally a daily occurrence during a normal year, that it's tough for myself uh, or my staff to, you know, to keep up and be knowledgeable about even who's on our team. You know, you come out to the ballpark in a given day, uh, you know, one day you may see, you know, as so-and-so playing for us, the next day you may see, you know, Felix Hernandez down pitching with us. You never know. It changes on a daily, um, a daily basis, which is a fun part of our job. Um, and a part of that as well is we never get too comfortable with a player because they can come up or come down. Uh, and so we really don't concern ourselves too much with who's on our team. 
uh, you know, as I talked about before, just because we, we it, it changes on a daily basis. Now, that being said, uh, with the taxi squad, uh, that is the one thing that's happening at, at Cheney Stadium right now. And if you were to drive over to the ballpark right now, it's, it's uh, on a pretty good lockdown, as you can imagine. Major League Baseball has, has quite the, um, the, the, the protocol in place as far as how they protect their team right now. Uh, and how they protect their players from, uh, uh, from, from getting exposed to the virus. Um, and so the ballpark is entirely locked down. It's off limits. Um, but for the next 70 days, or probably 65 days now, uh, we will be hosting roughly 35 players from the Mariners uh, at Cheney Stadium, where they're doing inter-squad games, um, doing practices. That's a daily occurrence. Anytime the Mariners are going to need a player, um, they're going to be able to pull from that pool of 35 players uh, and pull them up uh, immediately uh, to go play a game at Safeco Field uh, if they're needed um, and send somebody down accordingly back down to our taxi. So it's literally, it's, it's just like it sounds, a taxi squad that's going to be commuting back and forth from Cheney to Seattle um, based on the needs of the Mariners uh, over the course of uh, the shortened uh, season coming up. Awesome. Thank you for elaborating on that. We have a question from Lindsay, and it's a statement and a question. Um, and that is, she loves that fireworks were on the 3rd of July. And she's wondering, will there be fireworks on Friday nights? Will those continue? No doubt about it. And, and, and I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed uh, Lindsay. I think it was the fireworks on, on July 3rd. Unfortunately, we, we weren't able to get the green light to, to host people in our ballpark. Um, but we just made the decision to host a fireworks show for the community on July 3rd, and I hope a number of you uh, were able to, to see it or uh, view it yourselves or on our, on our uh, stream that we have online. Uh, but for Friday nights, at moving forward, absolutely. Um, the fireworks will continue, uh, not here this season when we're not having games as we progress to next year, um, back on opening night, July 3rd, and every single, fire, uh, every single Friday night game throughout the course of the year. Um, absolutely, we'll, we'll continue to do fireworks. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing, and I, and I know folks really uh, enjoy it. Wonderful. And she, uh, Lindsay, had a follow-up to that. Was What other promotions do you love offering to the fans? Uh, we try, you know, we try to do – we're not too crazy on the giveaways, right? You'll see a number of teams do, um, do random giveaways and, and, and trinket giveaways. That, that's really not, you know, it's not our, our um, you know, it's not our market. It's not our, 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 our number one emphasis, if you will. You know, we try to do fun things that recur, you know, whether that be kids run around the bases uh, on, on our weekend games, whether that be, you know, offering discounted, you know, uh, uh, concessions offerings and beer and different things like that every single Thursday night. Um, so those are some of the key things. And then we obviously have phenomenal partnerships um, not only for, for United Way Night, which uh, unfortunately won't be happening, as we all know, until next year, um, but, but a, number, a number of other partnerships that we, you know, that we do uh, with, local, uh, with local organizations um, that really, that's where we focus our attention. How do, how do we um, do those types of fun things that are actually more meaningful than giving away, you know, a random, uh, you know, a random bobblehead or a random, you know, a random hat to it, you know, that somebody may not ever wear again. Wonderful. And hello, Anne from WCCU. Good to uh, virtually see you. It's uh, good to catch up again. Uh, Anne's favorite Cheney Stadium promotion many years ago was sponsored by Nally's, and it had chili in a hot tub, really, where people had a chance to dig in and find a chance at keys to a new car. What's the weirdest, wackiest AAA or AA promotion you've ever heard of? Yeah, that, that was, Chris, that was before my time. Uh, <laughs> But but the legend the legend lives on of that one and, and that's got to be that's got to be the wackiest you know the wackiest thing I've ever heard of and, and, and the, the the lore goes where you maybe people here that saw it that could that could correct or tell me but the, from from what I understand there was a, yeah a hot tub down the left field line that was full of Nally chili that you had to dive in and and, and try to find a car key in, in set amount of time. Uh, and then you won the car, I guess. I mean, it was, I, I couldn't imagine ever doing it. And, and, but I imagine the crowd got a kick out of it. Um, and unfortunately, I don't plan on bringing that back anytime soon. Um, but to answer your question, that's probably the craziest thing that, that I've heard of. And, and, and again, we, we're not doing a ton of crazy stunts like that anymore. Um, so as far as what other teams are doing, I, I, I hate to tell you, I'm, I, really, I really don't know. <laughs> 
I don't know. Maybe Anne is fishing for WSCCU to sponsor a chilly hot tub at one of the Rainiers games one of these days. Who knows? <laughs> and we could talk about that one, Anne. <laughs> um, we've got one more question before we uh, start to wrap things up, and that's for Donna. And Donna, you might have, even Emily might be able to chime in on this one too. How are you shifting your campaigns this coming year to virtual? Um, yeah, we're. Uh... There's a lot going on. We're definitely working with our companies to see what's the best way to connect with them. You know, we love being out in the community. We love going to companies and talking with employees. And so uh, we're really turning everything into a virtual campaign this year. Uh, you know, the materials will all be, you know, online. And, and we've slowly started moving to online materials over the last couple of years. You know, looking for idea, working with companies to have different, um, uh, events virtually, uh, e-newsletters. So everything will be virtual this year. We've received probably um, surveys from about 50 uh, coordinators so far, uh, letting us know that, you know, yes, you know, let's figure out how we can still run a United Way campaign uh, virtually. So we're looking forward to an exciting year. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That's about all we've got time for questions today. Donna, thank you for that. Shane, thank you for giving us your time to uh, answer those questions too. And Donna, I'm going to turn it over to you for uh, the post-inning conversation. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a, man, what a great game. Uh, I'd like to thank the United, the, the team at United Way. You know, events like this, uh, yes, it's virtual, but it, it doesn't happen without a lot of, of folks putting in time and energy. And so I just want to thank my team, um, in particular, Missy, uh, Zinchek uh, Candler, Casey Caesar, Mike Goodell, Jody Jasinski, Robin Jones, Allison Loft, and Emily Medendez Bryant. Uh, they just did a, a fantastic job of pulling this all together. Uh, we'd also like to express our appreciation to our partner, the Tacoma Rainiers, uh, especially Aaron Artman, Casey Catherwood, Haley Hacker, and especially to you, Shane. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of this and um, being a part of the question and answer uh, portion with me and just the rest of, of your team. Additionally, I'd like to thank the Boeing Company uh, for sponsoring the event. And finally, I'd like to give a big, huge thank you to Chris Surface. Uh, Chris, you're just fantastic. You are moder moderator, Zoom extraordinaire. Uh, we really just appreciate you sharing your time uh, and your talents to make this event a huge success. And again, thanks to Suzanne uh, for, um, for joining us tonight as well. So I want to close um, in saying that we couldn't do we couldn't do this work uh, without your continued support. Thank you for all that you do for United Way. Uh, you know, if this event has inspired you, I encourage you to give a gift on our website to continue to support those that are most impacted uh, by this pandemic. So thank you again for joining us. Stay safe and healthy, and remember to wear a mask and social distance. Hope to see everyone at the ballpark next year. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the beautiful sunshine.